and shattering warmth. In fact, we absolutely obliterated the record. Where do we go from here? Your full forecast coming up. Don't have as many eyes and, and we don't have as many eyes. We can't see everything. We can't respond to every emergency. And lifeguard shortage concerns, how the state is working to make sure parks are fully staffed in time for summer. Plus, new video just into the newsroom, body cam footage showing the moments leading up to a Connecticut man being shot and killed by a Massachusetts state trooper. And reaction to a scary situation, an attempted armed robbery and home invasion caught on camera. Plus, praise for the child tax rebate. It was helping me to provide for myself, my daughter. How the program helped struggling families make ends meet. Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Jen Bernstein. And I'm Ben Goldman. Another hot day across the state today. Taking a live look at Mohegan Sun right now. The perfect weather to end the week. But... It's not going to last into the weekend. No, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now with what we can expect over the weekend. Rachel. Not a bad weekend, certainly cooler, but not cold either. We'll see temperatures in the 70s tomorrow, but nowhere near what we had outside today. As I mentioned before, we smashed this record. Today's high 96 degrees. The old record is 82. So we ended up beating that record by 14 degrees today, and that record was last set in 1941. So it is quite a long-standing record and to add on top of it it's actually tied for the hottest monthly April temperature that we've seen since 1905 so even more impressive for Bridgeport we also obliterated the record beating it by 14 degrees with a high temperature in the upper 80s here's a look at current temperatures as of six o'clock it's still hot out there 88 for Windsor Locks 82 in Meriden and temperatures today in Connecticut were among some of the hottest in the country. We still have gusty winds out there up to about 20 miles per hour. Not as gusty as it was a couple of days ago, but the brush fire risk remains high. We really need some rain and while we will see the chance for a couple scattered showers this weekend, it's not going to be too much. Taking a look through the evening tonight, dry at 11 o'clock with temperatures close to 70 degrees and we'll see overnight lows dipping back into the 50s as we head towards daybreak. Still warm, just not as hot tomorrow. Highs in the 70s and the chance for a scattered shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon. We'll time this out for you. Full forecast coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. Well, we're getting a taste of summer now, and the state is hoping to turn these temperatures into staffing winds, filling lifeguard stands amid a national and local shortage. Yeah, Fox 61's New Haven County Bureau reporter Julia LeBlanc showing us their efforts at Silver Sand State Park in Milford. The Connecticut shoreline is a major draw for swimmers. But it can be dangerous, even for the most experienced. It's the best job I've ever had, so as a lifeguard. That's where people like Elise Boothroyd come in. She's been a lifeguard for four years at Hammonasset Beach State Park in Madison. It really caught my interest being able to respond to emergencies, being there to help people. Problem is, across the nation, there have been fewer and fewer lifeguards to go around. We don't have as many eyes and, and we don't have as many eyes. We can't see everything. We can't respond to every emergency and they need those extra eyes, especially at a place like Silver Sands here where they have Charles Island, a sandbar that actually disappears with the tides, posing a major safety risk to swimmers. Once the water goes over the sandbar, uh, there is a lot of current and it can sweep you off the sandbar and it is dangerous. That's why the state needs more guards, a total of about 110 to fully staff all eight of our state parks seven days a week. We're really looking for a strong swimmer, an athlete, somebody who wants to work as a member of a team. Something that's been hard to find, especially in recent years because of the pandemic. What that created was a one or two year period where there weren't a lot of new lifeguards certified across the country. But Connecticut is catching up and paying up, increasing the pay for lifeguards to $20 an hour and paying for their training in full. If you love the sun, if you love the beach, if you love the water, I would say go for it. Now, those who want to be lifeguards at one of our state parks have until May 11th to apply. You have to be 16 years old and you also have to be a strong swimmer. Now, there are some tryouts tomorrow at Southern Connecticut State University. For details on that and more, head to fox61.com. We're in Milford, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. 
Julia, thank you. And for everything you need to know about the weather, you can download the free Fox 61 News app. There you're going to find the latest forecast and conditions in your area. Well, new tonight, the next time you have a package delivered to your door, make sure you look twice before opening it. Yeah, East Haven police say a man pretended to be a package delivery driver when he was trying to rob and enter a home in broad daylight this morning. Fox 61's Carmen Chow joins us live at the East Haven Police Department with what we've learned. Carmen. Brennan Jed, this happened on Maple Street and the entire incident was captured on a homeowner's ring camera. And tonight police are reminding everyone to be on the lookout for the suspect. Never in 40 years have I seen anything like this. Neighbors in the quiet neighborhood of Maple Street are all on edge after East Haven police are telling everyone to be on the lookout for a Dodge Ram, the truck the suspect fled in. Take a look at this ring camera video. At around 9.45 a.m., this man, wearing a black Vans shirt and an orange reflective vest, rings the homeowner's doorbell, holding a package in his hand. About 10 seconds later, the homeowner comes to the door and the suspect says this. I don't think this is for you. Next thing you know, he pulls out a gun and tries to enter the home. But the homeowner gives him a strong shove. The shove so hard, he nearly fell down the steps, holding onto the screen door. The suspect then hops on his truck and quickly speeds off. A neighbor who lives four houses down says he is going to be skeptical of whoever comes to his door now. Now, when somebody comes to my door, what do you do? You open it, you don't, you know, it's just terrible. It makes me feel that you can't trust anybody that's coming to your house. The homeowner telling Fox 61 no comment after we asked if they wanted to speak. Their next door neighbors now planning to take a double look if they get a package delivery. We usually make a decision after looking through the window at who's there. If we know that person, uh, if that person might have an official vehicle, perhaps. Now, the suspect is still on the loose. If you think you have any information about the suspect or if you think you've spotted his truck, you're urged to reach out to East Haven Police immediately. Live in East Haven, Carmen Chow, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Scary stuff, Carmen. Thank you. Well, new video tonight showing the moment a car slammed into a front porch in Meriden. Take a look at this here. You can see uh, the people in the car fleeing from the scene. Police say it happened around 1245 today in the area of Harrison Street at Elm Street. They say that the car was stolen out of Wallingford earlier today. Those three juveniles now facing charges. We caught up with one of the residents who was inside of the home at the time of the crash. The whole house shook like an earthquake. <laughs> Everything fell over, paintings, dogs barking like crazy. Um, I look outside, um, there's just a car smashed up in my front yard. No one was injured in the crash. Heart following breaking news right now, the Hampton District Attorney in Massachusetts has ruled that the officer involved shooting that led to the death of a Hartford man was justified. The DA's office released video from the night of that shooting. We do want to warn you, you may find that video disturbing. Fox 61's Gabby Molina joining us from the breaking news center to break it all down. Gabby. Ben, the findings of the investigation were released today, but the incident happened back in February in Springfield, Massachusetts. Officials say on February 25th, William Tisdall of Hartford got into an altercation with a man at MGM Springfield. The man told security officers that Tisdall told him he had a gun and threatened to shoot him. Massachusetts state troopers responded and followed Tisdall when he exited the casino. Body cam video shows troopers calling out to him as they chase after him. Get your hands out of your pockets! At that point, the chase continues and an officer tells Tisdall he's going to tase him. That's when Tisdall can be seen firing at officers and they fire back. We're going to pause the video, but you can still hear the gunshots.
Hizdal was later declared dead at the hospital. The district attorney released a statement with his report saying in part, Mr. Tisdall's actions dictated the course of events and the reasonable and necessary use of lethal force by the troopers. There is clear and copious evidence that Mr. Tisdall accessed, pointed, and fired his gun at troopers. He goes on to say the use of force by troopers was an unavoidable last resort and that they followed the policies of the Massachusetts State Police and the law. In the breaking news center, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you. In other news this afternoon, four people have been arrested in connection to a drug trafficking ring in Waterbury. Gawain Fisher, Terry Collins and David Hing and Derek Pruden are all being charged with conspiracy to distribute substances, including fentanyl, her fentanyl rather, heroin and cocaine. Officials say that Collins was using his home on Yale Street as a heroin mill where he packaged narcotics for distribution. They say that Fisher got the drugs from Collins, then distributed the drugs to Hing and to Pruden. New tonight, a Ridgefield man will spend more than seven years behind bars for his involvement in the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. Patrick McCaughey III was sentenced to 90 months in prison today after previously being found guilty of seven felony charges. The judge says that McCaughey used a shield as a dangerous weapon when he used it to pin a police officer against a door frame. In court, he called January 6th, quote, the greatest embarrassment of my life. An Air National Guardsman suspected of leaking secret U.S. documents will remain in custody. 21-year-old Jack Teixeira made his first court appearance in Boston Federal Court today to face charges under the Espionage Act of unauthorized removal and retention of classified and national defense information. Teixeira is accused of leaking some of the military's most sensitive secrets online, including records showing details of Ukrainian military vulnerabilities. A federal magistrate judge ordered Teixeira held until a detention hearing next week. Still